everyone you're welcome back to my youtube channel it's diamond mom here again if you are new here you're very much welcome i film about relationship mother with a lifestyle please do ensure to subscribe to this channel to my returning subscribers thank you guys for always coming back if you are in your dating phase or you are caught in and you seem confused about the traits that should be important to you because of course we know that a human being cannot be perfect so there are some important traits that you shouldn't neglect because these traits is actually very much important in the marital journey so i'll be sharing with you guys nine important traits nine essential important traits nine amazing traits that if your partner have the traits if your partner have proven to mark to tick all of these traits or even maybe at least seven or eight of these traits then you've got yourself a good partner the first important trait that your partner needs to show for you to know that okay this person is a good person is a good person for me is responsibility we all know that this marital journey is not a feeble thing it's not a temporal something or an on serious matter so it is a serious matter and you need to be with someone who is responsible enough to be able to handle situations when things get tough you know and going and not someone that will run away at the slightest challenge or at the slightest you know problem so you need a responsible partner preferably you need a responsible man this one now applies to the men you need a responsible man in your life if your proposed partner has shown signs of being responsible you know in the relationship then you've got yourself a good one the second important trait that you shouldn't neglect that you shouldn't deal without is integrity integrity we live in a world where we have few people of integrity we have few men and women of integrity if your partner has shown traits of integrity you know of firm moral principles principles when that partner says yes the yes is yes and the partner is not easily swayed by you know by by immoral things or by things that are contrary to his principle being a highly principled person then i say you've got yourself a good one because integrity is a very important trait that can contribute to the success of your of your marriage if you get married to somebody of integrity there are some things there are some vices that a person would never do things like cheating things like deceiving you lying you know and doing some negative things against you that person would never do it another trait that you should consider is humility the opposite of pride no one wants to get married to a proud person, of course, because the person will always wants to have ease or away. The person would never consider your feelings. The person you know will always want to love over you. So humility is one trait that you should never compromise on. If you're looking to settle down with someone and you're confused as what should I consider, what should I... Humility should top that list. Humility, you should never compromise it because a humble partner will always put you first. A humble partner will always be able to sit down with you, you know, and okay, put me through. But easily apologize. You cannot compromise humility. Humility plays a great part in the success of your marriage because there are some situations that would arise and it will only take a humble person you know to be able to compromise to be able to take the lower ground for the other partner to go up for the peace of that relationship so you don't want to end up with with a partner who would never apologize with a partner who would never be able to learn with a partner who thinks that he or she knows it all you know you don't want to end up in that kind of situation so humility is one trait that you must never compromise another trait also that you should look out for and you should not compromise is selflessness a partner who is sacrificial and selfless in marriage there are so many sacrifices there are so many challenges that will come and one of this partner will have to bow down for the other partner to actually go ahead so you need in your life someone who is sacrificial someone who is selfless enough you know to be able to take decisions that would be for your own good and not just a selfish person that is that is all about myself 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 i'm the man of the house you know you need to follow me to this you need to allow me to do this or i'm the woman you need to treat me like a baby you need to do this everything has to go my way get mama happy and no one happy you know using selfish mantras to justify their selfishness so you need someone that is selfless and sacrificial because whether you like it or not there are situations there are things that would come up in marriage that would require a selfless nature to be able to settle it without any issue so please do not compromise selflessness in a partner another trait which i feel is very very important and most often time tend to be looked down upon is the aspect of temperament compatibility opposite temperament does it better when it comes to marriage so if you're looking to get married to settle down with that man or that woman then you should think then you should look back and see how your both temperaments are now your temperament should be opposite by opposite i mean if you're the calm person then you can get married to someone who is a little bit hot tempered you know at least when the person is angry you'll be able to calm the person down and when you're you know so let it know be that you're getting you're hot tempered and you're getting married to a hot tempered person you know ekwe, ekwe, two of you ekwe, 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 ekwe cannot work in marriage so you need to you know to be opposite when this person is calm the other person can be agitated so when both of you come with your 50 50 it will equal to a perfect 200 or you don't want to be too extremes like you don't want to be the same spender spender and then when you come when you get married everything your finance will be a mess so you want to be 
opposite of each other. If your if your partner is an unhealthy eater, then you should be a healthy eater so that you can both, you know, checkmate each other because that's what marriage is for, for the betterment of the both of you. So for me, I feel and I believe that opposite temperament does it well. So you should also look out for these traits in your partner. If you're hot, if you're hot tempered as a lady, please, on no account should you get married to a man that is hot tempered. Look for someone who is calm and gentle and easygoing, you know, so that that marriage, so that the relationship can work and be a peaceful one. Another important trait that you shouldn't compromise on is kindness. Kindness. Look out for if that partner is a kind person. Not just to you because, you know, during the courtship phase, men and women generally tend to be kind to their partner. You know, they tend to show their better side. They tend to show the best of their best, you know, hiding some traits. So what you should look out for is how that partner treats people around. You know, mostly people that are below the person. If it is a lady or a man that is your partner, as the case may be, you should look for how that woman treats her help, you know, treats her stylist, treats her gates man, treats the driver. If you to go out to a restaurant or to a bar, you know, look out for how that partner treats the waiter, the waitress, you know, just people below or that washerman and this thing. So you should look out for how they treat these people because mind you, if they treat their gates man or that or that waiter or waitress, in a harsh way, in an unkind way, there is every tendency that in marriage that person would resurface that unkind nature and unleash it on you. So the person might just be kind to you during this courtship phase because, of course, you've not really committed into the marriage stuff. So when you both get married, there's every tendency that the unkind nature would come out. So look out for kindness. How does this person treat women? How does this person treat men? Does this person have a bias towards this, towards a particular gender that all women are this, all men are that? Mind you, the person will surely treat you that way in marriage. So kindness also should not be compromised upon. Also important is the family background of the person. See, we all come from different families, from different backgrounds, and our background, in one way or the other, affects our attitude, our mindset, and our general behavior towards marriage. Now, imagine you as a lady, you came from a family whereby your mom and your father, your mom and your father, they are so much in love, they always promote these positive values of marriage and family, and then you have this mindset already that, oh, me going into marriage, I'm going to give in my best, and I and my husband, we must be like this, and then you want to get married to a man who is coming from a damaged home. A man whose father and mother are like cats and rats. A man whose father constantly beats his mother. A man whose mother is the breadwinner of the family. Does it not Does it not occur to you that when you eventually get married to this person, that man might take the back seat and then continue to push you to go all about providing for the family? Because of course, he grew up watching his mom be the breadwinner while the father was lazy in about. So for me, I also believe that family background is one thing that you should check upon. But the thing about family background is that you might that you cannot really know it off but i believe that if you're very very observant that you would be able to pick up one or two traits from this person's family background that might affect the marriage look out for these important traits in that partner willingness to learn because we do not know it all we constantly learn every day but there are some people naturally they are ekwe ekwe agwamawa like do not tell me do not teach me i know it all look out for that kind of traits especially in men if you're dating that man and the man is all about i know it all i don't want to learn even if okay even if that partner does not want to learn from you because there are some people that okay they don't like learning from you know from their partner to avoid familiarity but is that man making efforts to read books to like you know to learn from the right places you know to learn from counselors or this thing so but look out for these traits willingness to learn in that partner if that partner is not willing to learn there is every possibility that in marriage that partner will continue to frustrate you because when they continue to do something that you do not like a negative thing and you continue to tell them to change to change of course there will be no change because the partner believes that everything he or she does is perfect so also do not compromise willingness to learn another important trait also is physical attraction yes physical attraction whether you like it or not sexual aspects is one important aspect of marriage that guarantees the success of a marriage if you're not physically attracted to that partner and you feel like the person is this the person is calm the person is kind the person has integrity the person is responsible but you're not physically attracted to that lady. This one now applies to the men. If you're not physically attracted to that lady, but you feel like she's a wife material, she has ticked all the boxes, please and please have everything. Because so that you don't find yourself in a situation whereby you have a wonderful, perfect wife at home, but you keep jumping from one woman to another because you're not deriving joy from your wife. Physical attraction is something that would help your, your sexual life. Also for the woman, if you're attracted to men that are tall, broad shoulders, macho, you know, six packs and so, don't marry a man with 
pot belly, please, so that you will not frustrate son of man. Go for your type. Go for someone that you're physically attracted to. Also, the same thing applies to the men. If you love your women chubby, you love them rounded front and back, don't go for slender women. Go for your type so that you will not be frustrated in marriage you know, and start acting out of your principles. So, physical attraction is also one trait that you need to sit down, you know, and have a deep rethink about this thing. Are you physically attracted to that partner? If you are, then congratulations. Okay, the most important and the last trait, the last character that you should look out for before saying I do, before saying yes to that proposal, before going into that marriage with that partner is if that partner is a lover of God. Now, I did not say fear of God, but I said lover of God because there is a difference between someone who fears God and someone who loves God. Now, you should look out for someone who has the love of God in him or her because that person will always wants to do things that pleases God. You know, we have issues of Christians, of pastors, of, you know, Wonderful people who are good Christians that portray all sorts of bad traits. We have wonderful Christians, you know, we have good Christians who have zero integrity. Now, this is because they fear God. They fear God. Now, you should look out for a man who loves God, a woman who loves God genuinely. Because that partner would pour out that love of God into you, into the marriage. And of course, you cannot love God wrongly. So, if a partner truly loves God, if a partner obeys God, if a partner sees the need that, okay, I love my creator and my maker, then that partner would also be a good lover for you that partner will also love you because you cannot tell me that if someone loves you in the right way someone loves you with the way the person loves god then you are in heaven on earth already so these are the important traits these are the nine important traits that i see i said you should never compromise that's even so that you should drop one for the other the nine are all important so if your partner takes this nine and maybe in some aspects that partner is not really you know is not really up to what you want or up to what you think you can as well consider that partner because for someone who has nine of these traits oh my god that person is going to make a good partner in marriage because imagine you get married to somebody who is kind humble of course a kind person is a caring person a kind person is a good natured person a humble person is willing to learn someone with integrity would guide his or her guide his or her actions would be very very well principled the person would not be corrupt the person would not be easily influenced a person who loves god will love you genuinely and wholly so these are the nine important traits that i believe would make a good partner so you should consider these traits these characters before saying yes I do to that person if you know you found this video useful if you know you found this video informative give this video a thumbs up share this video to your friends your families and your colleagues and please subscribe to this YouTube channel also turn on the notification bell so that you can get notified as soon as I upload a new video and I'll see you guys in the next one bye for now